Thank you so much. I want to thank you for welcoming me into this remarkable community of achievement. Because I can tell that tonight we are celebrating all the women who are changing the world. As you heard, I achieved the height of success this year. Yep, I appeared on the television show, The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> For those of you who haven't had the pleasure, The Big Bang Theory illustrates the trials and the triumphs of physicists at my home institution, the California Institute of Technology, and it's a whole TV show about really big nerds. I finally made it after 32 years of hard work to be the first woman cameo on that show. I have a SAG after a contract with Warner Brothers Studios to play myself. <laughs> now, the bad news is that after 12 seasons, the show is over. And some people think that's good news because the characters went from being endearing graduate students to being annoying professors who are lobbying for Nobel Prizes. Last December, I was also invited to a pretty cool party in Stockholm. It was a great party. If you ever get invited, I recommend it. You should go. And I went with 60 of my family and friends, including my IWF friends, and I met some inspiring people there. I have this wonderful photo with Donna Strickland. Now, I'll have you know, we're both playing with our chocolate Nobel medals. <laughs> because the Nobel laureates don't get the actual gold ones until we get on the airplane home and sign a release. Because apparently Nobel laureates are notoriously forgetful and have been known to leave their gold medals lying about. So we had to content ourselves with chocolate for a while. Not too many card-carrying engineers, however, win Nobel Prizes. But my bet is that will, that will soon change because we engineers deal with real-world problems. And boy, we're facing some pretty good ones, you well know. We have to figure out how to feed, clothe, house, employ, keep healthy 10 billion people, and do so without destroying the environment and all the other life we share this beautiful planet with. I have been proud to use my skills to do that, or at least to try to do that. Early in my career, I found inspiration in the greatest engineer and the greatest chemist of all time. And that's the natural world, specifically the living world. Nature has discovered a stunning array of solutions to an incredible range of problems, not the least of which is being alive. Nature. She figured out how to extract materials and energy and renew renewable resources from the environment and convert them into new living things with great efficiency and with minimal waste, recycling just about everything. She's our role model. So inspired by this, by the natural world, I wanted to become an engineer of that biological world. I wanted to rewrite the code of life that would solve human problems. 
Of course, I had no clue whatsoever how difficult that would be. Here I was at the beginning of the DNA revolution when we were just learning to cut and paste DNA for the first time with baby scissors. And this was just a few short decades after the structure of DNA was unveiled to us for the very first time. I wanted to engineer the molecules of life to make things that would serve us in our bid to provide food, chemicals, materials, and medicine to this growing population. And I also wanted to explore where nature had never gone before. Now, I had no idea how hard it would be to compose new DNA, because that code of life, it's like a Beethoven symphony. It's intricate. It's stunningly beautiful. And we don't know. We don't know how to compose like that. But nature does. Nature discovered how to do it using a process that's simple and elegant, and that's called evolution. A simple algorithm of mutation and natural selection that's created all the diversity of life that we enjoy and see. And it works at all scales, from molecules all the way up to ecosystems. There's nothing like it in the world of human design and engineering. So why not use evolution to move into a future? I won the big prize for figuring out how to do that. And the ability to evolve new biological catalysts enabled efficient new ways to make everything from better laundry detergents to jet fuels to new disease-curing drugs. And it's allowed us to genetically encode chemical transformations that biology never explored, but are useful to human beings. And nature learns very quickly when given a good reason to do so. We have a lot to learn from this process of how nature innovates. Because some engineers, they talk about, well, they like to talk about the internet of things. But that can't hold a candle to the internet of living things. The living world is the ultimate in crowdsourcing of problem solving, folks. Just think, there's a gazillion organisms out there working 24-7 to solve problems. And we can now use that innovation process to reinvent how we build our industries based on efficient, clean use of renewable resources. But there's another important lesson we can learn from evolution and nature. And that lesson is that innovation comes straight out of diversity, of recombining different parts, recombining different experiences. Without that diversity, we all move down the same path. We accumulate a lot of bad ideas. And evolution teaches us that that's a sure route to extinction. We all need to continue to welcome, nurture, and promote the diversity that will keep our world, our professions, and our solutions robust and healthy. And I see that here tonight. So I thank you very much for this wonderful honor, and thank you for having me.